Listen very carefully, you pillock. No one, no one knows what I've done with my life. No one knows how hard I've worked. And no one knows, no one knows what that's like until you've done it yourself. There we are. Mrs. B. Oh, Hello. where are we? We're on Chow Bella. We're on the back of Chow Bella. <sighs> just literally got in from work. Yeah. No, I just put my sunglasses on, but <laughs> <sighs> tired. <laughs> Bit grumpy. Mm. No, I'm not. So, welcome to our monthly. I'm going to stop calling it podcast. It's not a podcast, and it's no, typical format. Us. So, welcome to our monthly Q and A, where you folk, you lovely folks, send us in questions where we um, answer and we only do well sorry we don't do religion and politics we don't duck anything i don't share the questions with mrs b because that's how you like it i like to just shoot from the hip so let's uh, get straight into it as they say and then i can have me tea <laughs> right so the questions as i say all i'm doing here folks is just literally reading them out as they've been emailed in and the email address is down here now. It's DarrenEvans05 at gmail.com. Keep the questions coming. Right, are we ready? Mm. Let me just have a little slurp. And oh, by the way, our lovely little fur baby's down here sleeping. Yeah. He's been in his paddling pool today because we've had some <sighs> right hot sunshine. Oh, oh Mr. B's been working. Right, here we go. Gareth Pauls from Tyne and Weir. It's okay for you because you earn a good salary. People are leaving Mercy and Marina because they can't afford it. Have a heart. Must be an easy life with a good salary and no pressure. Rant over, Mr. B. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, oh. Listen very carefully, you pillock. No one, no one knows what I've done with my life. No one knows how hard I've worked. And no one knows, no one knows what that's like until you've done it yourself. So, Gareth, get back to your back bedroom up in Tyne and Weir. You probably read the New Statesman or Private Eye, you vote Labour. So thanks for popping by. Do one. Have a nice Christmas. Martin and Gail Roberts. <sighs> Location not disclosed. Ooh. Um, sorry, was I not clear enough there to, to Gareth? Right, anyway, Martin and Gail Roberts. Location not disclosed. You two are great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we love watching you and please do keep these videos coming. Oh, Absolutely. thank you. We don't plan anything other than that. We've said thousands of times we do it. It's our little bit of a hobby. We love doing it. We're not a huge channel. We know we never probably will be, so thank you. Um, here we go. We want to jump the queue <laughs> as we feel compelled to confirm as correct um, what a viewer sent in on your last podcast about lodges. Oh look, can I just say lodges are starting to get a bit of a theme on here. It's a bit like my retirement plans. <laughs> <laughs> or a GSA. <laughs> or a motor uh, yeah. yeah. Um can we just stress before we go any further, the questions you send in, we love them mm. and the responses are just our opinions. So we're entitled to opinion. So if we upset or if I upset them more than Mrs. B. I don't mean to, but I'm not going to hide or, or shy away from, from my views. No. So, please be, so that basically these two lovely pair, Martin and Gail have put, um, please be very careful what you're buying. Please read the small print on the site you're living on. Uh, we thought our site, which is why we've not disclosed our, red, our, our location, was fully residential. Turns out the owner had the right to turn our site into nothing more than a holiday park. We now find ourselves surrounded by leisure lodges, um, total nightmare and horrible. Also, by the best quality you can afford, um, these, in our opinion, are £350,000 plus. Wow. Uh, yeah, look, we've viewed those and yeah. we've said, yeah. you may as well buy a house, no offence. Um, Mr B, you are right. Uh, it's not about being right or wrong, it's just an opinion. I just want to balance this. Um, you may well you are right mr b you may as well go and buy a house um the other thing no one tells you is the condensation issues in the winter um it's like a boat yeah yeah we get uh, that and one very though. little chance of resale um don't know about that i really don't um we have had ours for sale for two years no no viewers yet that must be tough 
Uh, thank you for reading uh, out our advice um, and please please for those out there tread very carefully as the whole industry per your previous caller uh, lacks regulation. Oh. Um, I don't know what to say to that. Oh, from that's so, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, the only thing I can say is that there's always a, a buyer for everything, isn't there? Some will, will come along. The price and, is and right. Love, yeah. yeah, and love that lodge just like you loved yeah. it when when you bought um, it. I I, yeah. I I feel sorry for you. Yeah, uh, I really do. I yeah. do agree. Um, in what you've said, if you're going to spend three hundred fifty thousand pound plus, you may as well go buy bricks and mortar. Personally, I agree. Um, I, look, I don't know the motivations for people buying lodges. It's the same motivations for people buying boats or living in a camper yeah. van. Everyone's got a different motivation. Yeah, exactly. and, and go live your life. Yeah. Um, I mean, we we looked, didn't we? We had yeah, looked. we looked, and we it looked. wasn't for us to say. Yeah. I say the only ones. Well, the, the one site or, or the lodges on the site that I we particularly loved. We've said it before. Was down in the Cotswolds. They were beautiful. But I say they were four hundred thousand pound, and for that buy a house that i won't change my opinion yeah, on that a lot of money but beautiful um, i haven't looked at any lodges um sub that um so i i, I really don't know mm. so i just feel awful for you yeah. martin and gail yeah i hope you sell it fingers um, crossed and i hope the uh, that the industry if that's the right word does mm. become a little bit more regulated yeah, um, yeah. I, I, you know it's the same with anything bricks and mortar comes with trouble mm. buying a boat comes with trouble i think buying anything do your homework do as much due diligence as you possibly can and hopefully fingers crossed you've bought something you know good and and you know more than anything where you're living you know they're not going to pull the rug from under you like that because mm. that that is a nightmare i must yeah. admit i wouldn't enjoy that i, I really wouldn't no yeah. but but thank you um yeah like i say i don't quite really know what to say no, to no, it no um, just good luck honest. yeah good, good luck. luck seriously um ken and marina page from port talbot Sorry, Marion. <laughs> marina. We live on a marina. I'm really sorry, Marion. <laughs> Could cause some domestic It's been care. a long day. I've just got in from it work. It has, it has. It's what it's like when it first comes in. <laughs> Mr. B, Mr. B, I do hope you were cheering on the boys a few weeks back in the rugby, Wales v England. You're damn right I was. Um, been watching since the early days and we both love the banter you two have got. Thank you very much. Thank That's you. a really nice thing to say. Yeah. Uh, quick question, if we may. Uh, we'd absolutely love to know what other YouTube channels you guys both watch and please make them not be boat channels. Mr. B, I bet you watch something to do with managing your rants. <laughs> and Mrs. B, um, and Mrs. B thinks you are, we think you are into the unexplained. Mm. Um, Mrs. B, please, please, please blow us a kiss. Mr. B, deal with it. <laughs> deal with it. Mwah. So the channels that we watch, do you want to go first or shall I go first? Well, I'll go first because I, I I know the question, so I you know I. Oh, kind oh of, right, okay. Um, I'll be thinking about it. Well, I know. Uh, there's, there's, so there's a couple for me. Um, I've just stumbled across a channel called Exploring Alternatives. Absolutely love it, and it is about alternative ways of life. You know, living on a boat would obviously indicate that we're into exploring different ways of living. Um, so I absolutely love that. I also, this is be your laugh. I'm addicted to a channel called Fish Thirteen. Oh, um, it, it, it's a. I think he's either Japanese or Chinese. Um, basically, um, th there's no commentary, um, but it's basically a channel where he goes out in his Land Rover um, 110 or various other four x four vehicles, mainly Land Rovers, and does some camping. But he kind of films some of the kit. Um, that he uses to go camping. I'm addicted to it, absolutely addicted to it. Um, and I would be not doing myself a favour personally because I love Casey Neistat. Um, those are probably three channels some of you may have heard of, some of you haven't. I'd absolutely suggest wholeheartedly go and check out Casey Neistat. I think he's genius personally. But the other two are just kind of, you know, different ways of living and camping gear. Mrs. B. <laughs> <laughs> There's, yeah. there's 10 more viewers we've lost. <laughs> <laughs> that fish is just so funny. Um, I've always, 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 always loved Most Haunted with uh, with Carl um, and, Yvette. and Yvette and Stuart. Um, so that's always going to be around. And I do like anything on it. I've just found a fabulous channel called Well I Never. 
and uh, and it looks like uh, the guy that actually uh, it, it, it tells a really good story about different uh, interesting events and uh, it's not just about um, Britain it's all over the world he was doing a thing about mysterious ships that that went missing like the Marie Celeste and things like that so he looks a bit like a hipster he's got a lovely little uh, beard and little glasses and that and it's called well I never um, I also like slapped ham and nukes and chills which are all unexplained Weird. channels about paranormal so anything paranormal or a little bit you know I, I, what so I can't say that I watch channels that film camping and no commentary. With no commentary whatsoever. And, and they're on for over an hour, some of them. <laughs> right, so I hope that answers your question. Um, Paul Roberts from Nuneaton. And Paul's put, sorry about this squeaky chair. Paul's put, I know you are no longer doing the bike videos, which is a real shame. Absolutely love those so much. Really funny and also amazing scenery. Thank you, Pear, for doing those. You're more than welcome. We really loved it. Um, I would abs however, I would absolutely love to ask, um, what are your top three places you have visited on a motorcycle, Mr. and Mrs. B? Mr. B, come on now. BMW GSA you had was simply amazing. It was. It was an amazing bike. Um, you just had bad luck with it, surely. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'll deal with that now. Uh, for the record, I've said it many times, the famous genuine podcast we did where, oh dear lordy, I got, we got over, um, I think it was 110,000 um, comments all over. <laughs> I've still got that podcast somewhere. I might play it one day. I'll put it as a link. Oh, it's, um, anyway, um, yeah, I've said on that podcast, that was a genuine when we were doing the bike videos. We had a podcast each week. Um, the BMW GSA, not GS, no, GSA, because of its tank, suspension, and a few other bits and pieces, is the best all-round bike, two-up, with luggage on the planet, if you're going two-up. No, it doesn't even come close to being the best bike on the planet if you're doing one-up, but two-up, luggage, unbelievable piece of kit, and you're absolutely right, Paul, we were unlucky in terms of some of the niggles it had. Um, we'll come back to the top three places. Paul's also put, just for um, interest, really like to know what you would prefer if you were still riding. Gore-Tex all leather. And he's put in brackets, although Mrs. B in leather would be very nice. Sorry, Mr. B. <laughs> you know my rules here. Thank you. Um, keep the videos coming, you pair. Love you. Thanks oh, very thank much, you. Paul. Um, thank you. Gore-Tex, um, if you're riding all year, um, Gore-Tex if you are riding obviously on track leather um, but yeah Gore-Tex is it's comfy if you get good we bought good very good Gore-Tex touring suits didn't let a drop of rain in not cheap um, not not flexing well over a thousand pound each um, and they'll last you we still got them yeah we have. Um, yeah. and they've been all over with us so Gore-Tex mm -hmm. top three places you visit on a motorbike <gasps> oh I've got to say the top of the Grossglockner uh, Gross Gotland, for those that aren't aware, is the highest alpine road in Austria. And we've been up and down it twice, three times. So so we've been up the Ross Gotland when it's been snowing and we've had snowball fights and then we've come back down to our hotel and I've been sunbathing and in the swimming pool. And we've also been up the Ross Gotland and it's been absolutely blazing sunshine. Oh, it's just the most terrific thing. The first time I saw it, I couldn't believe what I was looking at. If you've never been that close to a mountain or several mountains, it's yeah, just unbelievable. I'll go with that. Uh, Strasbourg. I love Strasbourg. Um, we we had several visits there until we actually spent more than one day there. And we found yeah. that it was huge. We just thought it was all yeah, about the Strasbourg's little Strasbourg's a nice place. Um, yeah, and obviously um, Sol. Yeah, for me, uh, I would include the Grossglockner and all of the other... Um, high mountain alpine passes mm. um, uh, out of all of those for me it would be a toss of a coin between the Stelvio or the Gross Glockner um, Pacific Coast Highway when I did my first kind of that's going to have a little jaunt many moons ago um, uh, for those that aren't aware that's on the west coast of uh, the US absolutely unbelievable and I managed to ride not all of it but most of the Dalton Highway um kind of up in alaska so for me yeah un for different reasons um unbelievable um so yeah paul thank you for those questions thank and you. just to confirm don't anyone send me any hate mail about bmw gsa's <laughs> no i won't read it and i will not reply <laughs> it means that <laughs> i do um bernard proctor 
um, from Inverness. Uh, you Inverness. two are a couple of nutters. Thank you. Um, but we absolutely love you up here. Oh, thank That's you. That's a very nice thing to say. Yeah. Um, Mr. B, um, in brackets. Sorry, Miss. Sorry, Mrs. B. It's a Mr. B question. Close That's brackets. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you? So, do you think there's still a career to be had in motorcycle instruction? Question mark. I am approaching thirty and utterly fed up in my current job, and want to do my motorcycle badges. What do you think? Question mark. Any insight or advice you can offer up will be more than welcome. Also, is Cardington as daunting as they say? Question mark. Um, let me go reverse. Cardington, for those that are unaware, is where you, it's in Bedfordshire. It's a um, driving standards agency test facility. So it's where you go to be examined and either passed or failed. It's as simple as that as a motorcycle instructor um, and a motorcycle examiner. Um, and it's also a place you go if you're wanting to be a driving instructor. So it's called Cardington. I'm not going to lie, Bernard. Is it daunting? Yes. Um, you know, you are... When you get your badges, you are basically entrusted to, um, you know, safely uh, and legally instruct another motorcycle um, user, um, that's a technical phrase, to go and ride on the highway. Um, that is something Ooh. that you don't, you don't give these badges out. And same for a driving instructor, I would imagine. Um, obviously, I took my motorcycle badges. Um, you put... Um, you want to do both badges yeah do both badges so again very quickly for those that are aware there's there's a cbt which is com compulsory basic training badge so you have to have that qualification from cardington to go and instruct someone to ride um up to and including a 125 cc motorbike or you can do and you can also do your um direct or large motorcycle badge direct access das um so yeah my advice and um, bernard would be do two um, you know, typically when I was doing it many moons ago, typically what would happen, you'd go and get your CBT and then you'd probably, as the instructor, you'd probably see that student probably six, 12 months later, or once the age and the qualifying period had kind of allowed, you'd see them back in your training school wanting to do the direct access. So, but that, let me stress, that was 20 years ago nearly. Um, Things have moved on. I'm I'm not as close to the motorcycle industry as I once was for obvious reasons. When I did it, I got lucky maybe. Um, it was still kind of booming in terms of folk still wanting to do um, and, and, and get a motorcycle. I don't know so much now, if I'm honest with you, um, but would I go and do it? Yes. Um, there's still, I think, a living to be made. I think it's a lot more difficult uh, for, for different reasons your biggest obstacle or your biggest challenge will be to get enough ground to do your um, CBT training uh, and motorcycle handling because uh, that's completely changed it was changing when I was coming out of it um, so having enough ground to do those various elements of your CBT um, is going to be a challenge um, but it's not on some answer. So don't let me put you off. I'm just letting you know that would be for me the big ticket item. Where am I going to get my students, my pupils to practice to demonstrate their competence in terms of handling the machinery before I take them for the on road element? Trust me, as an examiner and an instructor, that keeps you awake at night. So that's going to be your big challenge where you get your ground or where you put your students to practice. But other than that, go for it. And if you want any more information, send me an email and I'll bore you rigid with anything I can help you with. Hope that helps. We've had a chap that used to work on the marina that's gone to do his. So yes, we have, haven't we? Yeah, very nice man. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and he's, he's just done exactly yeah. the same. So. The other thing I will say very, very briefly, and I know it's an old coin, people say this, coin this phrase so many times, you know, if you're doing something you love, it doesn't feel like a job. Um, it didn't with me. Um, I, you know, I don't want to go into too much background, but I, I built a fairly successful motorcycle instruction business. I franchised it in the end, uh, and it never felt like work. Um, so I do kind of understand if you're really un unhappy, stuck. You know my views if you've watched long enough. You've got one life, go live it. Um, and if you're not happy with what you do, change it. Mrs B quite rightly will balance that sometimes by saying it's not as easy as that. I, 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 it's not that I don't agree with that. I understand where that comes from, but I am grounded with keep moving forward. And if you're not happy, change it, change it up because you're only here once. Um, anyway, rant over. Yes. It's a bit ranty tonight. I am. It's because I've come home and I'm yeah. really hungry. Um, 
and they don't do toast toppers anymore. Unbelievable. Oh, if anybody can find that. any toast yeah. toppers, please. Send me a tin of toast toppers. Just please, yeah. I've <laughs> looked everywhere. Ned and Katie from Dorset. Um, we have been with you two all the way from Tenerife. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is... That's eight years. You deserve some type of award. Yeah, do you get a clock or something? <laughs> so again, for those that don't know, our very first like little foray into the YouTube world was we did some kind of travel stuff. Um, we've still got Sorry. those on our channel, but it's, they're kind of hidden away. Um, anyway, your boat is absolutely beautiful. Thank I just you. want just want to let you know. Have you? Sorry, just want to know. Um, have you paid? Got that extra sofa yet? Surely you don't need anything else for that lovely boat. It really is a floating bungalow. That's all we really wanted to know. And if you have got it, will you take a photograph and show us? Um, we haven't. We're, we're frantically looking. Well, not frantically. We're looking. Mm. Um, we will get one. Um, it's just, it's coming and stumbling across the right one. Um, and we've both got on our mind what we want. So we've seen a few recently that weren't quite there, but we'll get it and we will show you. And it'd be my seating position for it will. winter evenings. Yes, Probably my I, I will be on the other sofa. Yes. Um, Mike Price um, from Bolton. Oh. Uh, now then, you two. <laughs> Been watching for a long while now, and so good, uh, and so far so good. Thank you. Thanks for that vote of confidence, Mike. Um, I'm absolutely new to boats, so please, please go easy on me. Here goes. <laughs> <laughs> We're still new to boats. Um, why do some of the wide beams I look at have that funny front with no place to sit on? That's not criticism. And others, like your boat, I think, have a place to sit on with the cover over. I think it's called a cratch cover. You're absolutely right. The funny looking ones also seem to get very narrow and pointy at the front. Is there a particular reason for this? <laughs> also, what happens um, if there's an emergency on those tight boats? How do you get out of them quickly? Do you have to go all the way to the back or can you go out the front? That's a good question, actually. That's you a can very get good out of the front. The front of those boats, I know what you mean, they go a bit like that and, and they're very flat and slabby at the front. The window, you can basically open that window and it falls, it's an emergency hatch. So you don't have to run all the way back to the back deck. I didn't actually know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know so that. So that, 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 that by that. law has to happen. Um, th why do they go like that? I, I have no idea. Maybe that's just the design of those particular yeah, boats. Yeah. Um, I, I, anything you want to add to no, that? No, I, I suppose it, it depends what you want. So some people would more, rather have the inside space because you usually find that boats like that are boats that maybe have two bedrooms so they use more space inside than having that extra room outside because we always say this is like our conservatory where we're sitting now, the deck and the, uh, the well deck at the front is like our balcony so so you know that that's how we look at it so we like to have that little bit of outdoor space but yeah you want the, more room inside the front yeah the, the the well deck i absolutely love although i don't do that much fishing at the moment but i love that space um again it's just personal it, it it's kind of you know what you want what you like mm. i don't really like the front of those kind of boats it just it doesn't work for me um, but I, I have no genuine. I have no idea why they go, you know, so tapered in. I know exactly what you mean because they design, do. It's design, isn't it? It's just the design, yeah, just I the think, design. Mike. Um, but just to confirm, you can, if you are, God forbid, ever trapped, you know, you can get out of the bedroom in the front. You can just yeah. put the windows and escape hatch. Yeah. So yeah, just to confirm. Because otherwise, it's a long run down, it's, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Mike, thank you. Yes, um, thanks, Mike. We've got one, two, three, four, five. I usually ask, we usually go for about a dozen questions, so we've got five to go. <gasps> Mark Cullen um, from Glasgow. Oh, um, hiya. Thank you for sticking up for the Discovery. They are fantastic cars, and when you have air suspension, you really don't want anything else, do you? No, correct. <laughs> um, my car has done over 200,000 miles and still going strong. Wow. Um, also, you are spot on um, about not all cars are reliable. Uh, similar stories to you with some of my work colleagues uh, at work, Audis, BMWs, etc. Um, quick question, outside of the fact that you know you are really right about the discovery. Look, I, just before you get to your question, Mark, it's just an opinion. Um, I think I've shared before. My mother, God rest her soul, she had two um, from you. Um, worked them hard, drove them hard, serviced them, and not 
no issues um so far with ours exactly the same yes i agree with the air suspension it's like a magic carpet we absolutely <laughs> love the vehicle and yes you know funny enough i'm working with a guy at the moment i think i mentioned it on the last um q a um who's in a um we've got friends with one a rav4 god almighty he's having i feel for him you know his car's two i think 18 months two years old and at the moment he's threatening to take the brand RAV4, you know, I can't say because I don't want to get sued, but he's taking them to court. Um, and I d genuinely feel sorry for him. So yeah, no car, no car out there is utterly reliable. We bought a BMW GSA fully loaded, 20,000 <laughs> plus motorcycle, which is still branded as the best all round bike on the planet. The RSN fell out of it in Innsbruck in Austria. So, Nothing is ultimately reliable. Um, Mike's question, Mark's question, sorry, is would we ever buy the new Defender 110? Yeah, in a heartbeat. Um, but we've got this, I expect to keep this for a long time, but who knows in the future. One thing we do know is we'll probably stick with a Discovery Stroke Defender type vehicle. There's no doubt about that, is oh, it? Oh, it's like being sat in a heart, just, an armchair, it's it. lovely. Just love it, it's I've just nice. driven back from work. You know, they're just, they're beautiful vehicles. Yeah. Mark, thank you. Uh, Michael Llewellyn from Bridge North and um, Bridge North is in Shropshire isn't it um, I'm being very nosy that's what that's these things are fine. all about be as nosy as you, as you like <laughs> um, Mr B where are those two lovely watches you have do you mind me asking what brand please they look like IWC they are IWC um, by tag they did a, uh, a small limited edition a number of years ago or 50 I was very fortunate um, again that first idiot comment um, no one give them me I worked hard for them um, they're very nice anyway um, and you're also very right about the area um, uh, sorry about the arse end falling out of the wide beam and narrowboat market um, in general I wonder why PS love the content of the channel um, Michael still got the watches they're in the safe tucked away um, I've kind of reintroduced myself to my Apple watch only because I got a bit of peer pressure at work if I'm being brutally really honest with you um, and I absolutely love I've fallen back in love with the Apple watch I don't know which one it is can can I just say as well I think a little bit of that we love Anton Deck anybody that's over the pond then you'll have to just google Anton Deck and when we liked when we watched them on uh, I'm a celebrity and stuff they were wearing those watches too can I just say that was absolutely nothing to do with me putting that back on my wrist and I didn't even know that. That's a very, very good observation. But no, it was actually peer pressure at work. <laughs> and I came back one night and thought, I'll just dig it back out. And yeah, so no, I've still got them. I say they're tucked away nice in the safe. You're absolutely right, they're IWC. Um, why is the arse end falling out of wide beam and narrowboats? We talk about it quite often, don't we? Uh, do, you know, do you know when we were looking for our first narrowboat, how long ago was that now? Three years ago. And I was getting so upset because I'd, I'd look at a boat online on rugby boats or whatever and say to Darren, oh, that is so lovely. We've got to go and look at that. I'd show him maybe an hour or two hours later and it'd say under offer or, or sold. And they were going so quickly that I thought we were never going to buy one that we liked and for the budget that we'd got. And now they're just hanging around for ages, aren't they? Yeah, it's. Um, I, I think we both think it's. It's. I think it's a hang up from obviously post pandemic. Um, you know all that stuff. Um, I genuinely do feel sorry for folk. I think you've got a much better chance in a in a, a narrowboat. Um, there's a glut of wide beams out there. There's a glut of wide beams for sale here at the moment. There's brand new wide beams that you know the boat broker here is knocking 30 40 grand off nearly mm. so i you know unless i don't know i was i was about to say unless some, a miracle or something happens i don't see the market picking back up um at the moment um i really don't and i also think sorry i think a lot of it or some of it is also people finally realizing these things aren't cheap to live on no, don't no. don't buy a wide beam and certainly don't come to mercia um, if you think it's going to be cheap, I don't mind sharing it. We've just signed our mooring agreement for another year, and it's eight hundred and seventeen pounds per month to keep this boat here. That's just the mooring fee, not the electricity, not the CRT license. Da, 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 da. That's just to moor here, so it's not cheap, um, and it's not a cheap way of living. And I think some people have started to realise. Oh, hold on a minute. 
Um, if you're constant cruising. If, you, if you're out there constantly, yeah. you haven't got more in fees yeah. to pay. Um, and, and that's a huge, look, £817 a month and more in fees. Um, imagine just having that to burn on mm. something else. Um, absolutely. Uh, that's a really, really good point. Um, so no, it's... Um, and this, this is why we think maybe the narrowboats are, are... I think during the summertime, we've done it, you, you watch a narrow boat go past and the dog's on the back, you sat there with your coffee and you're tookling down the canal and it looks idyllic and it really is idyllic, I'm sure we haven't done it. But with a with a wide beam, unless you're down on the Kennerton Avon or you you're somewhere where there's there's bigger canals. I wouldn't say the K and A, the not Thames. the K and A, the Thames or something like that, where there's predominantly wide beams. A wide beam is basically a, an apartment or a bungalow, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that tends to take. Yeah. Uh, stay more stationary yeah. so I, I i don't know it's it just seems to have come to a yeah it's secular as we know that that you know that that's the world in general but at the moment i don't feel um you know good about anyone trying to sell boats um, but mainly wide beams but mm. anyway thank you for your question yes thank you and um, we need to hoot on a bit because the lights go in um, and <laughs> mary and peter uh north from middlewich um, thank you both for directing us to the mooring fees at Mercia. Bloody hell, it's not cheap. Oh, just We've said just that, said. yeah. yeah. Um, do you think that's why people are buying lodges and leaving? Um, the ground rent on a lodge is dirt cheap. I, I don't know, um, mm. to be honest with you. I, we haven't, because we didn't really look, we only looked at that one place down in Broadway yeah. in the Cotswolds. I, do, I know the, the, the ground rent on lodges are really cheap. Um, I hope that's not why... If it's one of your purchasing reasons, well then fine, you, you know, we've all got a budget, uh, but it wouldn't be mine, you know, it, it's got to be a nice place to live and it's got to be a nice yeah. area, all yeah. that stuff. Um, do you plan to retire there <laughs> or will you move to a lodge? No, on the lodge. Sorry if other people have asked that question before. Yes, they have, millions. Um, <laughs> we are fairly new subscribers, we'll let you off. Um, P.S. Mr. B, what line of work are you in? I'm a chief people officer for a international pharmaceutical company. That's all I can say. Um, why are people leaving Mercia? Mainly because of the money. Uh, yeah, it is. And, and we've, we've, got, we've got our cut-off point as well. Oh, let me tell you this. If yeah. it goes to £1,000 a month, which inevitably we will do in the next few years, we're gone. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It, that, how do I say this politely? It's not the money, it's that for me would get to a point of it's this place wouldn't be worth that and it and, and I, we do i love it here mm. and 817 pound a month to be perfectly frank isn't worth it um it's a beautiful marina um but yeah for me it's a thousand pounds once it gets to a thousand pound a month we're gone yeah i don't know what we're going to do but we're i'm not spending we're not going to spend a thousand pound a month just to sit in a canal as simple as that um no matter how nice it is that's just not financially viable mm. that's just silly um, and I hope the marina and other marinas in the UK start to cotton on to that because you know it's supply and demand and, and the marketplace will dry up um, at the moment folks are still looking to live on marinas but at some point um, it will dry up so yeah I, I, th I just think there's a perfect storm coming I really do yes fingers crossed it doesn't go yes I, when me and Kenneth are walking around during the day and we look at it they keep it so lovely here it's lovely it's a beautiful place to but live. is it worth what you're paying that's a that's thousand pounds point. could be used some, on something yeah, it's, yeah it's just, well just something different it's not happening no um, Kath and Chris from wide beam lazy days on the Thames you pair are very, very lucky because we so wanted to buy Chow Bella. <gasps> <laughs> oh dear. We just couldn't sell our boat, uh, our old boat, quick enough. Oh. And Chris didn't want a bridging loan. Good lad. Yeah. Um, I did. No, Chris is a good lad. Um, we viewed it twice and the spec um, was totally perfect for us being out on the Thames. Of course, we yeah. have a lovely boat now, but we just want to say we could sorry but we just want to say we could send at least a dozen folk your way if you ever wanted to sell it and um, that's good to know for the future um it really is a fantastic boat um that's it green with envy from the thames oh thank you <laughs> Kath and chris thank you for that and, lovely I, and I suppose she was built to to, to be yeah, on the move weren't absolutely, she absolutely absolutely oh glad you got a, a <laughs> super boat though yeah. final question from mark windsor from the midlands 
you recently showed a clip of the paint on the side of your boat yes we did it looks like glass what did you do and what did you use um, and can you also please show us the roof when it's finally done I'd absolutely be delighted to show you the roof mark um, do us a favour love you yeah, those, yeah. Um, those, excuse me you know what I mean don't yeah. you the buffer things so what did I do Mark I started off and I won't go into because again I don't want to go down the road of instructional content because you can get sued so it's just what I did no no advice no this is what you have to do thanks my love mind your head yeah um, I've banged me down here a few oh. times, haven't I? So, what did I do? I started off, I clay barred it. Now, again, for those that aren't aware, a clay bar is basically a, looks like a bar of soap. Spray your boat with water. You can buy clay bar solution. I don't know if it works. But basically, keep the side of the paint or the boat, the, the paintwork wet, sorry, and just clay bar it. All a clay bar does is take off and contaminant and grit and it just smooths the top of the paint then i basically um, and other brands are available um, i bought some of this mcguire's um, scratch x um, it is amazing you might need to zoom in um, i put that on uh, that onto my drill probably about a foot square at a time put that onto the drill um, that basically does what it says in the tin. It takes the fine scratches and squirrel, swirls, all that stuff out. Um, polish that off. And then I applied on a separate, for obvious reasons, again, onto the top of the drill, um, this Meguiar's compound. Um, look, I'm going to be absolutely honest with that, that. Those two things aren't cheap, along with the clay bar. Um, but that's what I put on the side of the boat mark, on the right-hand side. Because um, I think I may have said... Um, there was three or four perfectly um, horizontal swirls and, and marks and, and, and all sorts of stuff down the side of the boat. They have vanished and mm. that side of the boat looks like new. And it took a day in total and at some point, although the left hand side of the boat doesn't need it, I will at some point probably do it. Um, and even now, three or four weeks on, um, it's rain and all sorts of stuff the paint it just looks and it also seals it once you put your compound on it seals it so I can't stress enough make sure the paintwork is as clean as you can possibly get it before you put your clay bar and then before you put your compound your X on and then so you, you scratch X and then you compound so there's in fact three things well four things to do clean it clay bar it then put your scratch X on and then compound it um, and as I say, I did a foot square at a time, so you can imagine on a 70 foot long. It took quite a while, um, but I did it with a drill. Brilliant. Hope that That's like helps. putting makeup on, all the layers you put your makeup on with. <laughs> um, and as I say, other brands are available. I did a little bit of research and this stuff um, kind of came up. And months and months ago, we've got a guy on the marina um, who is, a, well, in my opinion, virgin and genius. Um, with what he can do with paint mm. i won't name him i don't embarrass the lad um, but i did speak to him and he did say to me he said mcguire's um, and i also spoke actually to our chandlers here and asked them how to get the marks and so and everyone in the chandlers midland chandlers uh, on the marina here they said the same use mcguire's but do the three the clay bar the scratch and the compound brilliant that is it as the light is going yeah, so so a few ranty things there for Mr B, weren't it? I'm going to feed him in a minute. And I don't then feel as though you've said much on this. I haven't, have I? I've no. just been sat here. I've been like the Debbie McGee to your Paul Medaniel. Paul Medaniel. Paul Medaniel. Who's Paul, Paul Medaniel? I don't know. Right, on that on that note, yes, I'm going to have me tea. What is for tea? Oh, I'm doing pasta with coriander and stuff. It's very nice. On that, lucky boy. Um, yeah, on that note, we will um, say goodbye. We'll see you um, next week for our usual blog, blog. and um yeah mrs bonneville say goodbye 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 see you next